Hi everyone, this is Terry. Today I'm recording a video showing you the settings for your Luminaire and today we'll cover the sewing settings. To do that, we'll select settings icon. The first thing I'm going to do though is turn down the speaker volume. I don't think you want to hear all of this noise in the video, so I'll make it where it, you can hear it, it'll be discernible, but won't be as loud. So if you look across the top of your settings page, you'll notice you have sections. You have the general section that we're in right now. You have the embroidery section, the Wi-Fi, and you have sewing. You also have this little icon here. When you select this, you can restore your settings to the default values. Sometimes I've had to do that on the Luminaire because when I go in and change things, I find that something has grayed out and I cannot make changes to it again. One of the things that I do, though, is I take photos of my pages and keep them in an album on my iPhone. You can also save it to a USB stitch, stick, not stitch. And on the USB stick, it will be a PNG file. But that means you have to, to be on a, a specific page and take uh, a snapshot of it, if you will, to save it as a file on your USB stick and you have to go to your computer. For that reason, I use my iPhone. But you can see how quickly I can reset settings to the default values. The first thing we'll talk about in the sewing section is the slider bar on the front of your machine. When this is off, this slider bar is a speed control. At the far left, your machine will sew at the slowest speeds, far right at the highest, and in the middle in the mid-range. If you turn this on, it now enables the machine to operate as a width control for zigzag stitches. So as you're sewing a zigzag stitch and you slide it to the right, your stitch will become wider and as you slide it to the left, it will become narrower. I tend to leave it in on the off position because it, while this is engaged, you cannot use it for speed. The next two settings are fine adjustment settings. The fine adjustment settings are settings for decorative stitches. This can be adjusted from as low as negative nine to high as plus nine for both vertical and horizontal. When you choose to go into sewing and you go into character decorative stitches and we'll select a decorative stitch from the menu and you will notice I have a mouse, but one of the things that you'll also notice is I cannot engage the slider bar nor use my middle button on the uh, uh, the mouse to move the slider. For that reason, I'm using my finger. If we select this butterfly stitch, you'll notice it's 17.9 millimeters wide and 23.9 millimeters in length. A stitch this large really needs to be stabilized. For that reason, make sure you stabilize your fabric before you sew these stitches. And you can do that with starch, but I would also use a light tearaway stabilizer under it or an iron-on stabilizer just to ensure that I have good stitch formation. In the event that you find that your stitches aren't forming correctly, you can make those adjustments. Another thing you might want to use with your decorative stitches to help with alignment is a needle beam, and I'll show you that in a separate video. The presser foot height can be adjusted from as low as two millimeters to as high as 10 millimeters. The presser foot pressure can be adjusted as well from one millimeter to four millimeters. This is the amount of downward pressure against the fabric. If you have your automatic fabric sensor system turned on, it will recognize what is the perfect height and pressure for what you're sewing. The initial position refers to the position your needle will be in when you go into the sewing menu. So if I select to have the center position and choose OK, and I go to utility section, You'll notice that 
it opens up with straight stitch middle. There's another setting as well that refers to which page I want to start on. If I want to start on the quilting page, I can select that. The pivoting height can be set between two millimeters to 7.5. Pivoting refers to when you're sewing and you have your needle down, your foot will raise to the specified height so that you can move your fabric. I really like this function. If we go into the sewing menu, you can turn on pivoting right here. And remember, you need to have your needle down. If you have needle up, you'll see that the foot is showing that, that it will not be engaged for pivoting. So turn it with the needle down and engage pivoting. Free motion height refers to the height of the presser foot when you're in free motion mode. This can be set as low as 0.5 millimeters and as high as 4 millimeters. You want your foot to float over the fabric, but you don't want it so high that you don't have good tension. We'll go into the sewing setting and we'll turn on free motion. Now you see the free motion foot on your machine and the feed dogs lowered. I'll turn it off again and you'll notice we had the J foot. The dual feed adjustment is an adjustment for the move it foot. This foot is better than a walking foot and I love it for sewing on bindings. You can use this foot by adjusting the speed of the belt that is on the foot and depending on the type of fabric you have, you may not need to adjust it at all, but you can adjust it as much as plus 10 or as low as minus 10. That will speed up or slow down the belt that is on the foot. And that is belt will glide across your fabric. You do need to plug this in. It is an electrical motor. The automatic presser foot lift, can, when it's turned on, if you press the start and stop button on the head of your machine or use your presser foot, excuse me, or use your, your foot pedal, your foot will automatically lower. If you turn the press to trim automatically on, what will happen is your presser foot will go down your threads will be cut, and then your presser foot will raise. We talked about the initial stitch page a moment ago. I like to have mine set on the utility menu. Reinforcement stitches are those stitches that you see in your stitch menu. Let's go back to section one. You'll notice the quote. That means it reinforces with the back stitch. And then you'll notice the dot, like the dot here and also on this stitch. That means that it will sew several stitches in place to reinforce. The reinforcement button is a button on your machine that has the zero on it or the circle, whatever you want to call it. When you have the reinforcement priority on, it will automatically sew those reinforcement stitches for those particular stitches that had the reinforcement stitch. I do have a video about reinforcement priority and I recommend that you watch it. It's been recorded for the Dream Machine, but if you do not want to watch the video, get a piece of fabric, turn it on and off on the settings and try out some of those stitches and you'll notice the differences. The Luminaire did not come with a multi-foot controller. It's an accessory, and your section here may be grayed out. If you happen to have a multi-foot controller, as I have for my Dream Machine, when you plug it in, this menu will engage. This means that this foot pedal over on the right, that's the larger of the two, if I depress my heel, I can perform thread cutting, needle position up and down, single stitch, reverse stitch, press her foot up and down, or I can set it to no setting. 
I like to use the reverse stitch right here. This way I don't have to reach up to the machine head to reverse the stitch at the end. Thread cutting can be achieved on the smaller pedal, but I can also set it up for needle position up and down, single stitch, reverse stitch, and press her foot up and down. Now this little pedal can be a adjusted to either move in closer to this foot using this metal bar or it can also be placed on the right hand side of the larger pedal. The next video I will record will cover the general section. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe to them and share them.